Hi, my name is Samit Singh Jani, and today we'll discuss on Indian FinTech ecosystem. Uh, it's, it will be useful for uh, audiences in India as well as across board, across the world, because uh, Indian FinTech ecosystem is very different from what is happening across the world. Uh, from, a, from the various segments they are there, the growth we have seen in different areas, and some of the individuals which have come, which has changed the entire uh, play out here. So we'll talk about this largely. Uh, we'll keep it tight, uh, keep it within 20 minutes if I can, hopefully. And uh, also it's done in a makeshift uh, uh, sort of Zoom platform within it, within our home because all of us, uh, as, 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 as we see today, are all, all at home. We can't move around. We are in a different situation. But let's use the best of what we can and so that we will share what we have and you can sort of learn from at home. So that's largely what we are doing today in the session. Uh, I'll just share my, you a small deck, maybe just a couple of slides uh, about Indian FinTech ecosystem. So the first thing first, uh, just sharing the uh, framework itself of uh, Indian FinTech ecosystem. Uh, this is what uh, we have been sharing with the world uh, for last uh, couple of years. And if you look at it, uh, Indian FinTech ecosystem started evolving around 2006 to 2010. When we, few entities came up, uh, if you look at those that era, the entities which came up were largely doing lending marketplace. So some of these platform was sourcing deals and passing on to their lenders. So we beat deals for loans, we bank bazaar, upna loan. They're beginning to this segment. So if you look at go below, uh, we had B2C segments, which is Paytm, free charge, entering the ecosystem and trying to make sort of create value out there on the retail payment side. Pine Lab payment came from a B2B perspective. So B2B became slightly bigger around that area. And this is evolving stage, as you see. Uh, Zero the Funds India around, uh, came around that same period, which focused on investment, PFF. Insurance policy was obviously very large now, but they, they, they sort of came up way back. And then uh, FinTechs we look at right now, which are enablers like Upper Fios or Winsoft, came around the same time. So these platforms, this is, this is, I'm talking about before 2010, where some of these companies could understand some segments, there was a possibility of trading value and then many of them entered. Now, uh, if we will take now more, we took a view of right now from 2006 to 2010, but now we will take a, a sort of view more from a perspective of, uh, from an from era perspective, we are looking at, just one second, yeah, we'll use Spotlight. Okay, so we will look at the era uh, more from a perspective of uh, what we saw around lending marketplaces uh, first. So we'll go with this segment first, lending marketplace. So if I look at lending marketplaces, uh, beyond that, uh, beyond 2016, uh, 2010, we saw a lot of new startups coming in this segment. Pesa Bazaar came, Pesa Bazaar very large now. We had Coin Tribe, Credix, uh, Biz to Credit. Now you may come back saying that they're exactly not uh, the players which are only doing lead generation, they are doing much more uh, in many segments. So obviously, uh, with time they have evolved, they started as a platform or a, or, a, or, a, or a marketplace. With time, they have obviously got richer experience and they have sort of gone through the, uh, the ecosystem place. So just not from a lead management perspective, they went further down the, uh, the value chain or create more in the value chain. So they've done doing much more than that. Um, and many of them with time will also uh, get into uh, uh, create their own NBFC. So the value is going to change with time. I, I think it's just a representation of that as of now. Then we have consumer lending side, uh, which is focused only on consumer side. Uh, we, will, we will, obviously there are a lot of companies like a Zest or a Money, money View or a PaySense. Uh, but we'll talk about maybe just a couple of companies right now. Uh, the first one is Rupik. Now Rupik is completely focused on gold segments. So they're giving gold loans across the country. They have done evolved well, and they have got recently another big big chunk of funding is what they got recently. So this segment is doing very very well right now, and with time we see that uh, the the segment will evolve much more. It will see more competition as well. Uh, then there is Zest Money. They are in the e-com side. They are giving quick loans, quick frameworks. There we now also see them in the offline business world as well. So this segment has grown uh, largely in last uh, three four years and. Uh, uh, the e-commerce exit process, this is the value creation they've done is that instead of doing payments directly um, or, 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 or giving a long-term sort of process of giving loans, the e-commerce platforms are integrated with players like Zest. Zest is able to underwrite quickly and give ensure that the, 
the uh, the the transaction gets done end to end rather quickly. So end to end is done from a lending perspective in a short period of time. That's their value. Then there is come like simple, which is pay later kind of products. What they do is uh, at the checkout process they give you a very very small ticket loan immediately, and then with time with time you obviously they will increase the 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 size of the loan. So many players have done well in this segment. Uh, Busy Pay is also in the same segment from PayU side. Uh, then we have SME lending. This segment we are talking about SME segment is a capital float or a new growth or lending card. All of them are giving uh, loans of various sizes, be it let's say five thousand to let's say even ten lakhs, fifteen lakhs. But the focus is largely to merchants or SMEs who are doing businesses, small businesses, and they typically may not be able to get loan uh, from from a bank. Easily or from an NBFC, so they have sort of be able to create a new uh, sort of uh, underwriting base model. It may not be dependent purely on the on the bureau score, but more values uh, from a from a structure perspective. For example, um, many companies are now doing merchant cash advance. Basically, they know that how much is the merchant selling on a daily basis based on past transaction or a PG transaction, and based on that, they do underwriting and give them loan. And they deduct the money which is which is collected by by these merchants through the same platforms. For example, if the customer does a sale of let's say ten thousand rupees uh, on a daily basis, and he is giving a leave in a loan or let's say one lakh rupees, and out of say three thousand is deducted on a daily basis, the moment he does a ten thousand rupees transaction, when the settlement happens next day, three thousand will be deducted and handed over back to the lender. And that's how the partnership between many of these. Payment platform or PG or POS players and the lenders have started over, over a period of time. So SME lending again a very large chunk and continues to evolve. Uh, there are obviously some stress we have seen in the segment, but we believe that with time this segment will eventually evolve and become big. P2P lending. Uh, this started I think four to five years back. Back uh, we obviously know that in US a lot of companies came in this segment and. Uh, uh, lending, uh, lending club was the one of the one which came up uh, way back, uh, and that 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 has done well. And, and re recently, they bought a bank as well. So that being the case, many Indian uh, ecosystem also looked at saying that instead of getting a, a big chunk lending from some uh, or borrowing from somewhere, then lending on, they, can they do peer to peer lending in which they act only as a, as a platform for lending, whereas the 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 lender actually is a small person like you and me. And the borrowers is a normal person like you and me, and therefore this platform tries to aggregate lenders with borrowers and match them so that needs are done. And this platform obviously has a bigger value from a perspective that uh, you might be able to, as a lender, be able to get a bigger, uh, higher, higher rate of return. Uh, the only downside is the NPs also hit you. So I, for example, personally invested in uh, money in one of these platform, uh, rather two of them. Uh, the experience with one of them was very, very poor, very process oriented, manual and all. But the second one was good. Uh, the only thing is that I'm, I have some NPS with them, which I have to take, uh, sort of accept and move on. Um, I'm not prescribing any one of them, but I think I would be able to at the end make around 10% return, which is not bad given that a bank gives us 4% return. Uh, I don't know what will happen after Corona or uh, virus issues, uh, if the segment will have see more stress, but as of now, I'm not doing. I'm not very unhappy with my whatever lending I've done on P2P. You should look at these companies like a, a Linden Club, Fairsend, Monexo, Finzi, or uh, and Island and others, right? And then comes financial inclusion. This is a, a new segment. This is about segment where you are using fintech framework to reach out to masses which are which need help, uh, which which were typically getting support from only government. Can that segment be supported? And, and obviously, MFIs have done a lot of job. So how can these fintechs create a value in this segment as of now? So that's something which we now are seeing in last few 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 months, few years. Uh, players like uh, Mahagram or a Kalidafin or a Finlok have done uh, sort of, uh, they've started evolving with time. Uh, nobody has become very, very large as of now, but we see, we'll see as we go forward. Stellaps is an interesting company, which is purely into uh, into uh, uh, milk IoT processing, milk processing business, which has gone into lending business as well, based on the uh, sort of uh, what data they have accumulated, and they're doing a br brilliant job at, of it. Then we have neo banking, net new segment, uh, neo banking and accounting. Many guys have come back and say, why are we sort of grouping these two together? 
my personal perspective is that uh, all those who are in neo banking will get into accounting all those who are in accounting will get into neo banking on the at least sme side so you must start from this side or that side you will reach there it's difficult to qualify that uh, uh, this classification is right or wrong but we'll see uh, maybe with after 3 years with the hindsight i'll be able to say i was right or wrong but as of now i think this segment is powerful we have on the retail side the neo or a, or 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 a yellow bank out there um, and then on the other side if you see vyapar iso uh, ok credit open bank khata book all of them are focusing on sme segment uh, slightly different models for each one of them maybe in one of session we'll talk about it but good good segment to be in at least sme segment will do very well i my personal belief uh, and for many of the players which are into b2c payments or b2b payments or investment banking many of them will fall into a neo bank because what we are saying is all that the banks are offering can be offered by these platforms and they will offer much more uh, services back then we come to uh, b2c payments i think i'll not de uh, delve too much into it uh, everybody knows the the, the wallets everybody knows uh, like paytm free charge mobi quick then we have a, a remittance platform instarem uh phone pay is a upi based app uh credit for example is doing uh, credit card payments but uh, simplifying the experience and i see as we I, i see them forward i think they will create much more value with because they have data of the of all the players who have credit card and have a they qualify pre qualified them as well so therefore they can offer different services to them we move to b2b payments uh, b2b payments obviously different segment uh, slightly more complicated than uh then then and b2 b2c uh from a <coughs> expenses perspective maybe slightly cheaper uh but lot of lot of value has been created if you see pine lab which is on fast side uh pay you maybe more from a from a pg perspective easy tab which is primarily focused again on a on a pause device uh m swipe is actually m pass uh, and a lot of other players are there if you look at bharat pay is completely changed so that's a b2b pay, payment platform which is for uh, for uh, merchants but they have also started giving loans on top of that pay nearby is going to masses with uh, with other based platform uh, reserve pay is a, is a is a great uh, great platform from a post uh, payment gateway perspective and they are uh, with time evolving into uh, sort of what do you say uh, neo bank as well because they are offering new services up, uh, in in the framework then we move to investment and pfm uh, zero do is a is a is a case where everybody is, is sort of trying to copy they have done a brilliant job of uh, as a discount broker, broker and uh, as a tech platform they have done brilliantly well uh, some of the players which are into into wealth side which is uh, maybe even even mf online these players have done well but the challenge is that with with time they are not able to make more money because the movement has more moved more more towards uh, i would say uh uh when a broker the brokerage has become zero most of them have moved towards direct plan so it's difficult to make money in this segment uh fisdom as well w w done well with partnership with banks uh but we'll see how it goes i i use one of the platforms uh and i'm very happy with them the experience is sort of very very unique in one of those platform and not name it because you some of them will say that i got paid for them not really uh but i like like some of them as well uh move to insurance i think uh, a lot has not happened in this segment uh we've seen policy bazaar which is largely focusing on uh, offering online policies in partnership with lot of insurance companies we have seen um, easy policy in the same segment cover fox which is not doing too well that's what i read few days back uh because this segment is tough because one player uh, which is policy bazaar has sort of taken the full control of the market and difficult to sort of, sort of others place to do well i'm not saying not others will not come up but difficult i think the biggest value is coming right now from a manufacturing side so those who are, who can create new models can actually create policies or can help with work with 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 the insurance companies to create new policy frameworks new products they those will do well we have seen toffee we have seen digit uh, some of them will also new ones will also uh, emerge with that, with time then we come to rectech uh, another segment which where we see uh, immense value coming up in next few years uh, i think difficult segment to be in it's a pure b2b i think many of the retail customers will not know these names like a geom or a id5 but they do they have done good in terms of putting good products good processes for 
of banks or fintechs to adopt, adopt. So basically they are saying from a KYC side, AML side, fraud, or any of the regulation perspective, they are creating new products, new services, which can be used to ensure, for example, just a very simple service. Uh, when you have to check uh, 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 the name of the customer based on account, you need to do a penny drop. Now you can go to a bank to do it, or you can work with one of the fintechs who would have tied up with, with, with uh, banks to do it. So you, with one partnership, you'll be able to do KYC, fraud, a few more things, and you see some name names out there which have done well, like like uh, Credit Watch, Intent, Curza, Science, many of them, right? Um, then we come to fintech enablers. Fintech enablers are uh, companies which are purely focused on creating value from uh, uh, from from banks and financial institution fintech perspective. They enablers, for example, uh, I think almost uh, almost entire uh, India knows about portfolios, how they do statement analysis and give the data out, out there. So that kind of companies which are not really doing lending but enabling lending is what, or enabling payments is what is doing well. Uh, Winsoft is on the wealth side. Great with their again helps on the underwriting side. We have uh, people like Yab, which is doing good on payment side. Credo Lab is focused primarily on on underwriting based on mobile data and many more. So I think this is what I sort of I wanted to share about Indian fintech ecosystem. If I were to sort of summarize it uh, as such, uh, before 2010, we would look at digital marketplaces uh, generating leads for loans and insurance. I think that segment is what came up earlier and obviously a bit of wallet as well started happening. Uh, 2010 to 14, I think everybody thought that if you have wallet, you will become bigger than bank. I think that era was a bit strange. Uh, as a banker, I was used to be with a bank and we were thinking of how they will make money and we couldn't see any way they will make money. I think uh, that unfortunately has played uh, played out. Uh, many of the payment bank have sort of uh, returned their uh, licenses and others have not done too well. Uh, I'm not saying this segment will never do well, but I think this is this wallet kind of business never worked out. And with UPI coming in, sort of, there's no such play out there. 2015 to 18, I think uh, we saw India stack and the license, uh, the the frameworks coming up from government side that got enabled. We also got uh, sort of uh, uh, other other frameworks like EKYC, UPI, eSign all coming in. So the becoming of fintech became not too that difficult. A uh, lot of banks also started creating new products. You've seen Kotak doing it. You've seen even, even uh, you know, coming up from SBI. So a lot of good work has been done by even banks based on the frameworks available. Uh, coming back to uh, fintechs, they got into lending more. If you see the crowding around 2015 onwards, it's largely around, say, a, a, a SME lending or a consumer lending or a P2P lending. That became very intense. And a lot of UPI-led platforms also came. Enablers also started coming. So I think if I look look at this, this side of it, uh, 16, 17, that area was sort of, you see a sudden growth out there. Uh, and if you look at now, I think UPI is obviously at a peak. Uh, we will see more consolidation, more buyouts. Uh, if new banks are emerging right now. New entrants are getting in, buying will end up buying list companies. I think we are enter, interesting, entering very interesting times. Obviously with Corona, a lot of business models will also sort of change. Uh, we will see more risk with some of the fintechs, but I'm sure uh, with time we will evolve and many of them will become bigger and bigger. So this is my thought process on it. Uh, we would look, to, uh, look, we'll be very happy to hear your feedback on it. So thank you for, for listening and we'll come back with more, uh, more insights as we go forward. Thank you guys.